Hey everybody, Chad here, and I'm just doing a quick tour of the garden in the springtime, but everything's not in bloom yet. There's a few things that are. I'm just going to go around. Um, first, this gorilla cart. You can see this thing can hold hundreds and hundreds of pounds. It's very nice. We're just using it to haul stuff all around here to um, bring soil to the back, bring plants, uh, even big concrete planters like this. This is my wife's um, grandma's, and both of these we repaired one of them it cracked and um got broken pretty bad so we put some that glue that can hold concrete on it um gorilla glue and so far it's doing pretty good it's the concrete kind that can do that but uh anyways these are super tunia vista the pink right here is bubble gum from proven winners this uh what is it called royal velvet maybe it's a super tunia from um also proven winners so we got the bubble gum on the side and then the uh, purple in the middle. So looking forward to those and going to put some slug stuff down at the bottom. It says I got the kind that says safe for dogs and animals and stuff like that. So hopefully it still works, but um, we have some dogs, so we don't want to hurt them. We're going to put it up right up under the edges of the planters there. So last year, snails and sl or slugs ate my super tunias and I hated them. I actually picked them out and smushed them with my feet. Uh, for nights and nights and nights and it didn't even put a dent in them. They just kept coming. So uh, getting some getting some stuff to take care of that. These right here, future uh, video hopefully if they work. These are evening primrose. This is their second year so they're about to um, hopefully get really really tall. And these guys are awesome. They will start blooming and the flowers only last for a night but they open up um, in the evening, hence the name evening primrose. And they open up in just a few seconds. So within about two or three minutes, I think it is, maybe 10 minutes, the entire plant is full of blooms that you just watched pop open. And um, I've got some video of that. So I may uh, either put that in this video if I can find them, or I'll wait till we do another video when these are actually in bloom. But I dug these up from where it reseeded itself um, a couple years ago. So I'm really hoping they make it. We'll see. Then we've got some uh, Forsythia Show Off Starlet. This is a small Forsythia dwarf one. It is from Proven Winners also, and you can see it's already just starting to flower. This will just go from all the way down to the base of it, all the way up to the, um, the entire stalk will be full of those yellow flowers. I love Forsythia, and it's when you're supposed to know to trim your roses back as well in the springtime, because Forsythia is one of the first things to bloom. So I've been eyeing those, and I decided I just gotta go ahead and get those. So I, I looked at them for about a month at the store, and then went ahead and picked them up. Here, these are going in the back in the new retaining wall flower garden. These are New Dawn roses. I got these from Sanderlin Nurseries, which is a local nursery, and these things look amazing. They're already um, really, really tall. You can see this thing right here comes up to uh, my chest. But you can tell this is the first real aggressive climbing rose that I have bought. Most of my climbing roses um, are not too tall, they don't go crazy. These are um, still in a pot and they're already starting to, to go crazy. So and then back there Oh, let's see. That's a white rose not new dawn. It's iceberg. There we go. So this is iceberg. I got these from um, Lowe's the ones that they sell in the little plastic boxes not the bag roses that are basically bare root But these were basically bare root um, So I plant them in these pots to get them going and they have leafed out nicely. So very excited to get those I don't know, can you guys hear that bird, those birds? Man, they're very, very loud. So, that's all the stuff that's got to go in the ground. I may just put these for Sithy at the front door um, as they start to come into bloom before I put them in the ground. And then put them in the ground after they're done. Just to show them off. Still waiting on the Japanese maple to um, start leafing out. But you can see, it's... And they are right, right there. They're ready. Um, let's see, the rose trees, knockout roses, these are um, sunny knockout, the ones that smell. The only knockout, I think, still that smells. Um, this is a regular knockout, uh, double knockout. I think that one's red, I think. Let's see, there's a sign at the bottom. Pink. It's pink. So, pink double knockout rose tree. Over here, this one I think is red, unless it's also pink. They kind of look the same, really, once they get going. Um, the reds end up turning into pink. This is a drift rose tree, and so really like it. 
And then all the other ones are sunny knockouts. That's another sunny knockout. This is a sunny knockout. So you get a little bit of a lemony kind of smell in this area, which is really nice. I actually thought this one was dead. Uh, our dogs hit it rustling around and it just quit blooming halfway through the summer. Never had any new uh, growth at all. Just completely shut down. I think it went into shock, but it has leafed out nicely. We've got the roses here that we train on the trail. So you can see they've leafed out and are actually going to have some buds on them. Uh, I actually see a small flower right here that's about to get bigger and bigger and then open up. And I am very excited about that. <laughs> Carolina Jasmine that we replanted that were where that rose was just now. So they're all in bloom, both sides, and then the lower petalum right next to it. It's putting on a show. This thing was going up above, the, almost the top of these trees behind it right here. And we just kind of cut it down and now it's starting to fill out. Keep it cut short about that height, let it kind of trail through the fence there. Another Carolina Jasmine. The Griffins guarding the door. Guess we're a Gryffindor. We've got our little fairies. These are made to look like they've got some patina on them. Um, our bronze. There's this one over here. And then of course our welcome fairy. So, all that's pretty nice. And then look in here. Look at first, let's look one more time. Look at all that color. That's why I love Carolina Jasmine. Early color in the year. These are like, um, what are these called? Japanese something, something, I don't remember. I'll have to look it up. Um, right here we have some more drift roses. Drift roses, just look at the color. All that new growth coming out, getting ready to bloom. And there's some of our other roses. Some of these are David Austin. Uh, not sure what that one is called. Let's see. Oh, that thing is breaking apart. Oh, the tag was kind of under the ground there. Well, darn. I guess the tags don't last when they're underground. Montezuma bows. All right. Well, the lady. <laughs> that one did it too. Well, dang. How about that? They're just falling apart. I'll have to clean all this up in a minute. The lady something. I can look it up later on and figure that one out. Our fairy. The first one's uh, one of the first fairies I painted. Really like this girl right here. Our climbing rose that our dogs have pretty much dug up. And yet it is still starting to have blooms. It's going to, or starting to have leaves. It's going to have, actually, I think, quite a bit of show this year they haven't done that great for me this is a good day sunshine but down here i kind of try to fix it where our dogs had dug up and put a little fence down there behind it put some weed barrier behind that or in front of it and then filled it up with some dirt so hopefully it's blooming i'm gonna just gonna keep watering it and then after it's done may move it or if it doesn't do good this year if it gets a bunch of um disease and things like that and all the leaves start getting and a bad looking, I may just end up digging that up. It's it's struggled. Oh, let's see here. This is a. I think this is John F. Kennedy, or that's John F. Kennedy right here. And this one is. I always say Judy Garland. That is incorrect. Julie Andrews. I don't know why I always say that, but Julie Andrews. These are just red and pink knockout roses. Look at all that growth. So nice. Yep, very excited about all these. And let's see over here. On this side, we got the drift roses again. Uh, different ones, apricot, and I think, let's see, that is coral drift there. These guys just go crazy. Some kind of stone crop, I think. I'm not even sure what the perennials are that's coming up in there. We'll see. We have a few cone flowers and some brown eyes Susans, but I don't know how they're gonna do. I really don't have a lot of experience with perennial flowers um, that just die back and come back every year. We've actually got limelight hydrangeas back here. As you can see they're starting all three of them to leaf out. This is the same as the Good Day Sunshine on the other side. It's only one cane coming up out the ground, so I'm really not sure what we're gonna do with that. The other canes all died 
as I said, these things don't really stay very healthy, so I don't think they like all the humidity and stuff out here in the southeast. This is one of those Lowe's things that's got a red rose on it and a white rose on one side, both grafted in, so it's pretty neat to have, you know, red and white, but it hasn't done great either. It could be its last summer if it doesn't do something. Back there's Don Juan. That is a climbing rose. It did not do anything this past summer, barely grew at all. I was wondering if I was too close down there to where if there's some concrete up under the edging right here of the brick wall as the foundation. But it's starting to leaf out. It's real skinny still. So I'm just going to see how it goes and start kind of putting it up against the wall if it gets any um, good growth and flowers and stuff. But it does have new growth on it. So we're just going to have to kind of see. I'm going to let it go do its thing this summer and then reevaluate. But it does have some buds coming up on it in some different places as well. This is just one of those hydrangeas. Um, I don't even remember what it's called from Lowe's or Home Depot, one of those stores. And I just bought it, popped it in here. Didn't think it could handle kind of some bright midday sun, but uh, it's just uh, enough shade in the afternoons, I think, to let it get used to it. So it's done pretty good. Once again, some more jasmine. But this thing, I put it where the stuff on it, where it's going to be blue. Um, we'll see if it works or not. I think last year it was blue, some were purple looking and uh, just a little bit of everything. So we'll see how that goes. But anyway, that's the front. I think I'm gonna take the planters over there, put them up here. Sorry about the gnome mooning everybody, but uh, I'm gonna clean all this up and get both the planters somewhere up there and then put the slug stuff under it. So these trees were here when we moved in. We just kind of keep them about that size and I just didn't feel like digging them up after I dug everything else up here. We had Laura petal them right here that went up to the top of the house almost um and so great privacy for anybody trying to see into the kitchen window but not very good for anything else so now we'll make our way around towards the back I have to excuse the mess back here we just got to kind of straighten all this up at some point have a cleanup day but uh right here this is one of the uh french impressionist roses and i'd have to look that name up because i cannot pronounce it uh, unless i'm looking at it but this thing has a kind of swirls of color in it and one of my favorite ones last year. But once it got hot here, the afternoon sun and stuff, the blooms just kind of died out. Um, they still open up, flowers came out, but they were not pretty anymore. They just looked beat down and wore slap out. So this thing likes the spring, it likes the fall, but once it gets in the middle of summer, this thing really struggled to, uh, to do its flowering and make it as pretty as it was. This is a David Austin, which I got at clearance at Lowe's for $5, Jubilee Celebration. And put it in this pot last year, kind of put it here where it's got quite a bit of kind of dappled shade during the day so it wouldn't get fried because it was looking really bad. And now it leafed out beautifully last year. It bloomed, we cut a bunch of those and put them inside because they're just so pretty if you know David Austin type uh, look to them. So this thing has got a lot of new growth on it as well. And that is, uh, what I say, Jubilee Celebration, David Austin. You can find those sometimes at Lowe's and places like that. If you get, they'll get a bunch of the same ones in. And these are the lentil roses, which I dug up, that were just kind of sitting in the back flower bed, not doing much. I'm just seeing if some of these survive. They're kind of beaten down. But uh, some of them are got new growth. I need to go through there and get rid of some of the dead leaves and let the new stuff take over. And these lentil roses, they are going crazy and doing great. The only problem is you have to get all the way on your stomach to see the actual blooms because they are so low to the ground. They just look down at everything. And then those, what is it, Eucheras, I think they're called, or Hellebore, Hellebores, Eucheras. I always get the names confused, but anyways, they, uh, they're they looking good. I like these, and they have so many colors of these leaves that you can choose from at the store. Up here, haven't done anything with these pots. I'm going to cut them back, um, all the old dead stuff. But that new green start coming out and trail down. Uh, I think that's Creeping Jenny right there. There's our statue. We got the spring one coming out. There's Old Man Winter. The fall one's my favorite on the other side. <laughs> these grasses, I haven't done anything to them in a couple years. Except last year, I planted some stuff inside with them. But we just keep moving them around. They just keep surviving on their own without anything. But they're looking pretty rough, so they're probably going to come out soon. Here's one of our fairies. And I had some matching flowers of that 
kind of light bluish color in here last year, so I'll probably do something like that again here. Or paint her flowers white and put her next to the moonflower vines, and then they'll be next to the sunflower vines with the sunflower fairy, so I think that'd be awesome. Butterfly bushes, they're not really doing anything yet. They're one of the last ones to break dormancy. I'm always confused, I can't tell if it's really doing anything because those leaves have been on it all winter, so um, I don't think it's actually started growing yet. Same with the butterfly bushes down at the bottom. And here is our sunflower fairy. Last year we had some credible flowers in this pot and this pot over here. This year, we just put in some super tunias, that, um, purple from Proven Winners. And then we have the petite knockout rose, which I saw at a nursery and I'd never tried those. So that's a kind of a new in the last year or so, I think. So that's a petite knockout rose and they're good for containers. So we put them in there, we got matching ones here. And we're gonna have a bunch of Suncredible sunflowers somewhere out here in the garden bed. I don't know exactly where, but somewhere. And that's where the fairy's probably gonna go, along maybe with that little sunflower table right there. And then very quickly, the flower bed, still gotta do some things. Those new dawn roses, they're going right there and right there, going up this trellis. And then we've got our butterfly bush, which once again, I transplanted these from the pots behind them you see right there. They haven't done anything. I'm waiting to see how they do, especially cutting a hole in that weed barrier. I really hate that I did that weed barrier. I wish I could change that, but oh well. And here, these have already started blooming. We put these in here last, uh, about a week or so ago. There was a video on that one that you can take a look at. And then behind right here, these are all drift roses, which are, you can tell they're in bloom or they're budding. Got lots of new growth on them. Leafing out some new stuff. Can't wait for those to open up. Ooh, we're about to have a flower. I know, is that a flower? Uh, let's see, can't see where I'm looking on the, right there. Is that gonna be a flower right there? I think it is. How exciting! How exciting! And then we have the Gulfstream Nandina. They're doing pretty good. <laughs> My white wedding hydrangeas, still looking like sticks. No growth on them yet. And then those alt cypress are just sitting there doing their thing. And that's all we've got. But I said we've got a bunch of sunflower sun credibles coming in that'll bloom all summer long. And we're probably gonna put those around there between the butterfly bushes in front of the um, the arch or the trellis or the whatever that's called I said while ago. So that's pretty much what we've got done here. We gotta go spread all this dirt out still, figure out what we're gonna do here. We got a big stump up under the ground right there from an old tree that was evidently cut down. And so a lot of that's unusable unless I wanna do something creative. Maybe put a statue, a fountain, a, a big barrel, and plant stuff in that, one of those old-fashioned tubs, whatever. We'll, we'll figure it out. Got to clean up all this, put some pine straw down, and then figure out what we're going to do with this little bit of room we have before we get to the Corps of Engineer property, and then we can't do anything. So anyways, I'm going to have all the bird stuff over there. A bird pooped on me a while ago, by the way. I was walking with my brand new, not too old, Cruiseville Adventure hat. My merch, as my cousin or my uh, nephews call it. And so I was walking up under that tree right there and felt something hit the top rim of my hat. And sure enough, it was bird poop. I saw a little bird too. Couldn't get to him to get back at him. So uh, anyways, he got me good. And now I had to go clean my hat off. I hope we don't mess it up because that's the only one I got. But anyway, if you like this video, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button if you want to see about more stuff that's uh, notified when we post some more videos. We got some tent stuff down at the land that we're going to do, um, setting that up. And then we're very excited about that. And I think that's about it. So share this with your friends. And I'll be doing another update of the garden um, in a few weeks as things starts to bloom out. And we'll just kind of compare, see how everything keeps shaping up. Talk to y'all later. Hope you have a great day. Bye-bye.